Hello and welcome to this special edition of Tech 24, entirely dedicated to the Energy Observer, this X-Racing catamaran powered by hydrogen it's about to go around the world for six years solely on renewable energies. The goal is to prove that a cleaner world is indeed possible. And before they embark on this incredible journey, the vessel and crew have stopped here in Paris for the expedition's official launch. Well, in this edition, we'll be looking at what Paris is doing to become a greener and more efficient city. Sensible people have already understood that fossil fuels are an energy source of the past, so they better anticipate the switch to renewable energies. But first, the Energy Observer has also been dubbed the Solar Impulse of the Seas. Solar Impulse was yet another pioneering expedition in which two pilots got together to showcase the effectiveness of clean techs by flying a solar plane around the world. Together, they traveled 40,000 kilometers without fuel. While earlier we spoke to one of these pilots, Bertrand Picard, and we asked him what it feels like to witness yet another expedition that's set to halve the world's energy consumption. You know, Energy Observer carries several symbols that are very dear to my heart. Of course, it's over the water, it's protection of the oceans, uh, like my father did with a dive in the Baptist Cave at the bottom of the Marina Trench. But it's the symbol of energy that was so important for me during the sum, so, solar impulse uh, around the world flight. And as a symbol for the crew, I, I brought the compass that I had in the cockpit of solar impulse during the flight around the world, I had it in front of me showing the direction, but the direction is not only to navigate, the direction is also to spread the message. How can we bring these positive emotions, this enthusiasm around clean technologies to the public, to the governments, to the industry? Because the, the future has to reconcile ecology and economy, otherwise it will not work. And this stands for the right direction to keep. The French capital is often referred to as the city of lights, but it's now looking for new and innovative ways to light up its streets. In the fight against global warming, Paris has committed to reducing the energy consumed in lighting the streets by 30% by 2020. And in that looks like the French startup Glowy could be part of that solution. Well, I'm now joined on the Energy Observer by the CEO and founder of Glowy, Sandra Ray. Thank you so much for being with us. So tell us more about your startup. What is this technology that you've developed? So we are developing a, a biological lighting system that works with uh, microorganisms coming from the deep oceans, because in the oceans there is a lot of animals that are able to uh, make light uh, with a phenomenon called bioluminescence. So what we do is that we take some genes coding for this reaction and we put it into bacteria. And then uh, if there is all the condition that they need to, to be alive, then they will uh, produce light. And so how did you come up with this concept? So um, I was a design student and I saw this uh, TV show on deep sea fish and I saw that they were able to produce this light without electricity so I think uh, I thought it was maybe the answer to a, a lot of challenges, economical, ecological and sanitary challenges around uh, electricity consumption and light pollution also. So you started this as a student. Now, what will it look like, this new sort of lighting in the cities? So what we're developing is a raw material that can, that can glow. Uh, so what we want to use it for is to replace electricity where uh, it, has, it gives visibility or enhance something. So for example, for outdoor communication, for shop fronts, for buildings, for urban furniture, everywhere where uh, we can avoid this electricity consumption, basically. And do you think Paris one day will be a completely enlightened by the sea, if I can use that expression? And if so, when do you think it will become a reality? I think it's, it's coming in a few years, and I really think that Paris is the perfect city to start this as it is a city of light. Um, there is a lot, of, uh, a lot to do because there is a lot of uh, pollution, light pollution problems in the city, and also a, a real uh, desire to change the way we, we uh, consume energy. So I really think this is the way to start. Sandra Ray, thank you so much for speaking to us here on Tech24. Thank you.
Paris is also known for its cobblestone streets, but those could soon disappear and be replaced by new high-tech roads able to harvest solar energy and create the electricity needed to run a city. After five years of research, Colas, the French leader in road construction, is now experimenting the world's first photovoltaic roads in the suburbs of Paris. It's the first in the world. A road that harnesses the power of the sun. These are photovoltaic tiles that capture light and transform it into electricity. Covered with a waterproof layer of resin containing fine sheets of silicon, they're tough enough to withstand all kinds of traffic. The panels have been tested at a dozen car parks and other sites around France. 90% of the time a road is directly exposed to the sky. They're only used by people in traffic 10% of the time. So by sticking photovoltaic slabs on the surface of the roads, we're able to exploit the light and turn it into electricity. The goal is to produce electricity without encroaching on nature or agriculture. Construction company Colas, backed by the French state, has been developing the tiles, called Watway. The big pilot project was inaugurated last year in Normandy. A one-kilometre stretch of road capable of supplying enough energy to power all the street lighting to a village. It's the pride of Tour of Perche. Anything that can save energy, produce solar electricity and so on, I think that's a good idea. But how well will they actually work? Panels installed on flat surfaces have been found to be less efficient than those on sloping areas such as roofs. Heavy traffic could also block sunlight, as could snow, mud and standing water after rain. If the trial in Normandy pays off, the Environment Ministry envisages building a thousand kilometre of solar roads within the next five years. But the ambitious plan will cost five million euros per kilometre. It's now time for Test 24 with our in-house expert, Dan and Jay Cattlecar. He's in the 14th district of Paris to tell you more about the iconic advertising Morris columns that are set to undergo a major transformation. I'm in the 14th district of Paris, standing in front of this special advertising column, also called a carbon sink, because this could be the future of fighting pollution in our cities. For more on this, I'm now joined by Jerome Ornodis, who is in charge of this project. Jerome, could you tell me how can this column help in fighting pollution? In fact, Dan, we are in front of the first step of the process, imagined by Suez and Fermental. In this first step, we put some microalgae into a water solution. And by photosynthesis, this microalgae will capture the CO2 and release oxygen. Something that is done by trees as well, right? Similar to it. Exactly. Uh, the efficiency of the microalgae are more, more important than the trees. Uh, by calculation, here we are in pilot study, but our calculation uh, shows that uh, a column like this is equivalent of 100 trees in terms of CO2 captation. Ca captation. Right. Now, is it just carbon dioxide that uh, the microalgae will absorb or the other gases as well? These microalgae we select with Fermental are able also to capture some uh, NO2, some, some air pollution, and also some toxin. Right. And the first process is not the end of the utility of microalgae, right? Because after it gets saturated, it is used for other purposes as well. Could you tell us more about it? Exactly that. After uh, this first step of purif air purification, the microalgae will uh, grow, and this extract of microalgae will be extracted from this colon and sent to the wastewater treatment plant, where they'll be, uh, they will be treated in order to produce biogas. This biogas then will be, will be able to produce electricity or will be re-injected also on the city gas network. Okay, thank you very much, Jerome, for your time. You're welcome. Now, speaking of green energy technologies, we are going to test a hydrogen bike. We have already seen the importance of hydrogen on seas for energy observer. Now we'll, be, now we'll see the use of hydrogen on land in terms of a bicycle that has been developed by a French company called Pragma Industries, which is based in Biarritz, it's south, southwest of France. 
The principle of this bike is almost similar to that of the energy observer. There's hydrogen stored inside the bike. There is a fuel cell that uses hydrogen and oxygen to produce electricity. And this electricity then powers the electric motor, which is situated here. Now I'm going to use this bike to meet Julia, who's waiting for me at Pont des Ambelli. It's the end of this special edition of Tech 24, dedicated to the Energy Observer and to what Paris is doing to become a more sustainable city. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Thank you.